In this video, we'll talk about independent samples t-test. An independent sample t-test is used when you would want to compare mean scores between two different groups for one continuous variable. Following are a few appropriate situations where you could use independent samples t-test. A teacher wants to know if there are significant differences in marks obtained in the subject business research by students of two sections. A manager would like to know if there are differences in morale for male and female employees. A marketer would like to know if buying behavior of people of two cities is the same or different. An educationist wants to investigate if teacher satisfaction varies between school and college teachers. In each of the above mentioned scenarios, we could easily see that data is collected from one continuous variable, for instance, marks obtained, morale, buying behavior, teacher satisfaction. However, it is collected from two different groups. It could be two sections, it could be male and female respondents, two cities or from school or college. And then they are compared using independent samples t-test. Now let's first run the independent sample t-test. In order to run independent sample t-test, you have to go to analyze, compare means and independent samples t-test. In this case, we are interested in finding out whether entrepreneurial intentions differ between male and female employees. So we select our test variable because this is what we are interested in testing. So we select EI and put it in this test variable list box. Now we want to compare EI between male and female respondents. So we select gender and put it here. And then we select define groups. So we've got two groups. One is labeled one and the other is labeled two. Continue and then we press OK. Now here are our results. We've got group statistics and then we've got independent samples test. So these are our results. Now if we look at the group statistics here, N, one is female, two is male. So there are 146 female respondents and 283 male respondents. The mean for females is 3.98 and the mean for males is 3.58. By the look of it, it shows that female have higher entrepreneurial intentions as compared to male respondents. But the question is whether or not the differences are significant. So in order to evaluate whether or not the differences are significant, we have got this table. But if you look at this table, we've got significant results here and we've got significant results here. Now, in order to test any hypothesis or in order to make sure that whether our hypothesis is supported or not supported, we need to evaluate the significance value. So significance value is the criteria which lets us to ascertain whether a certain hypothesis is accepted or rejected. But in this case, we've got significance here and we've got significance here. But we, in order to test the hypothesis, in order to draw the conclusion to our hypothesis whether or not the hypothesis are significant or insignificant or the results are supported or not supported we are interested in this significance to take in this case both values are the same but there are times when you will get that both values are different one may be significant the other may be insignificant now But how would we select the values? Shall we select the top value or the bottom value? Now, in order to do this, we have to go to Levine's test for equality of variance. What this tells us is whether or not the distribution or the variance between the two groups, male and female, the distribution of data is the same between the two or the variance between the data is the same in the two groups or not. Now, if the equal variance is assumed, we select the top value. And if the equal variance is not assumed, we select the bottom value. Now, how would we know whether to select the top value or to select the bottom value? If this significance value right next to the F column is 
greater than 0 0.05, we would say that equal variance is assumed. But just in case, if this value is less than 0 0.05, which is the case in this particular scenario, we would say that equal variance is not assumed. So the value is 0 0.010, which is less than 0 0.05. So equal variance not assumed. So we will select the second row to assess our hypothesis. So this means that the spread of numbers in the two groups is not equal. So when the spread of numbers in the two groups is not equal, we would go for equal variance not assumed. So now it's time to test our hypothesis. So the significance value is 0 0.000, which is less than 0 0.05. So we can say that there is a significant difference in entrepreneurial intentions between female and male respondents. Now how do you report these results? Now that we have interpreted the results, how do we report it? So here is one way to report these results. Let's format it a bit. Okay. Now this is how you do it when your results are significant and this is how you do it when your results are insignificant. So I'm just going to do the, the one and then obviously you can use the template to do the other one. So let's propose our hypothesis. There is a significant difference in entrepreneurial intentions between female an independent sample t-test was conducted to compare the let's add our criterion variable which is EI for female and male respondents there were significant differences so let's add t-value and the degrees of freedom we see let's sort it out a bit since we are taking this second row so results will be drawn from this row so in this case in this case our t value is the degrees of freedom is 335.711 let's copy this and our t value is 4.971 so let's add the t value here 4.971 and our degrees of freedom here the p value is less than 0 0.001 since it's 0, 0, 0. in scores with mean score for group 1 what is group 1 for female so what's the mean for female 3.9822 Whereas the standard deviation is 0.73903 was higher than male respondents. So the male is 3.5852 and the standard deviation is 0.86389. The magnitude of difference, the mean difference is 0.39703, the mean difference is 0 .39703, 0 .39703. and the 95% confidence interval is 0.23, this is 0.23994 to 0.55413 there is no zero in between so yes our hypothesis was supported now this is how you can easily interpret the independent sample t-test results but now let's format our table so we've got only one column
some space here to format our tables. So let's uh, add some space for our cells. Okay, let's add female, male. This is um, me, and uh, let's add standard deviation here. We can format that later as well. We do not need this. And since equal variance was not assumed, so we will use the second row. So we do not read any data in the first row. So we'll delete it. And then let's add our mean and standard deviation. Here it is. And we now do not need this table as well. So we'll remove this table. We do not need this row because this is independent sample t-test. And let's select this row, go to layout, and let's put it here. Okay. So let's remove uh, the extra borders so that it makes sense. Okay. Now we can obviously format this with borders. Do this at the top border or bottom borders. Okay, so now this is how you can easily arrange your independent samples t-test results. I hope the video would have, would have helped you understand the concept of independent sample t-test. Thank you.